Hey, what's going on, everyone? This is Mitch. Good Sunday morning to you all. Hope everyone is doing well out there this morning and having a great start to your day and a great weekend out there so far. Here to give you the latest information on what's going to happen weatherwise for your Sunday. Of course, we'll break that down in great detail. We got a system that's going to bring uh, a chance of some severe weather across the Mississippi Valley as a cold front progresses eastward. And then after we talk about that, you know, we'll, we'll pretty much work through today's forecast portion of the video pretty quick because all in all, nothing super active ongoing today. But after we get done speaking on that, we're going to break down again what we've been talking about over the last few days. And that is this uh, severe weather risk uh, that is really going to crank up tomorrow, the day of the total eclipse. I know um, in some of these areas that, you know, the path of totality is going to go through has a chance of severe weather. So we'll speak on that. We'll speak on Tuesday's risk. We'll speak on Wednesday's risk. And we'll speak on Thursday's risk. This is going to be a week long event. I think Friday we might be finally done with it, but we still got to watch the timing of these um, surface lows is going to eject off this trough. So we're going to speak on all this. We'll get detailed just like we always do. And at the very end of the video, we'll give you uh, an updated uh, cloud forecast on the total eclipse for tomorrow. So uh, this will probably be the last one I do. Um, and I think that we pretty much have a solid handle on how the clouds are going to uh, behave for us, if you will. Uh, so if you want to just know that, skip right ahead. It'll be time stamped out beautifully in this video. Like I try to always make it there, but certainly any suggestions of how to do something better, definitely let me know. I'm always uh, restricted on time for sure. I uh, wish that I could tweak some of the details a little bit more, but until I can do this full time, uh, this is always going to be a very raw, um, a raw presentation, if you will. So, and I think most people appreciate that. But with all that being said, if you guys have not subscribed, certainly consider doing that. Like the video if you like it. And if you guys got anything that I can pray about or pray over, as always, please put those in the comments below. Asking for prayers um, for my little girl, my youngest girl, Adeline. She's six. Uh, yeah, she's feeling fine, but she has a very sensitive skin, just breaking out in some rashes. Not sure if she uh, just rubbed up against something, might be like an allergic reaction, but uh, she's heading up to urgent care with her mom right now. Uh, so just asking for prayers, it's not a big deal. By the time I drop this video, we'll probably already get the news or whatever it is, but um, definitely asking for prayers for that. So let's get rocking and rolling. So we got a spin over the middle of the country right now. This is a weakening uh, storm system. Uh, still bringing some high winds for certain areas, kind of a very small section, getting an all-out blizzard in like western Nebraska. I'm still snowing in these areas right in here, Wyoming, Black Hills of South Dakota, and like I said, western Nebraska. We got some moisture in Montana. We got uh, just kind of a tail whipping area of energy that's moving across the Midwest. And then we're going to watch for the development of some thunderstorms ahead of a cold front down the Mississippi Valley, east and west of it. So we'll speak on that. That'll be really the only heavy topic, I guess you would say, of today's forecast. Uh, but the rest of the country are finally uh, clearing out the moisture in the northeast. That we're dealing with a little bit more this morning, but I think it'll end up being a better day for the northeast. Um, as we get into later on this afternoon, the western U.S., the southern tier of the country, pretty quiet this morning. So, Storm Prediction Center, there is a marginal risk, like I said, right up the Mississippi River, Mississippi Valley, Delta, all the way up to the mid-Mississippi Valley region. And uh, we'll watch for some strong and severe storms today. I don't think today will be a big severe weather risk by any means. This is really driven off a cold front. Uh, but there will be a small risk of tornadoes. There's a 2% risk of a tornado. Within 25 miles in any given location in this green area. And then, of course, the wind threat, 5%. Hail threat, 5%, respectfully. So uh, not a big, severe weather day, but certainly watch out if you live all the way up from, I would even say, Springfield, all the way down to northern Louisiana, a very small section of eastern Texas. And I wouldn't be surprised. We get a marginal risk issued up here, here in the next outlook or two. And I'll talk to you about why here in a second. Um Excessive rainfall outlook. This will be more of a, a bigger topic over the next uh, few days. We are going to have some flooding concerns across the like Texarkana region and just this entire region right in here, right where Texas, Arkansas, Louisiana, and Oklahoma sort of almost meet right there. A lot of rain. That'll probably be the focal point of the most rain, but there'll be other areas to see a lot of rain. The entire south will probably get a lot of rain from this, but today, not a big deal. It really starts tomorrow, so... Watches, warnings, and advisories. The country looks a little bit more quiet, but we're still dealing with a fire danger across the southern high plains. Got them blizzard warnings in five counties in Nebraska. High wind warnings continuing for some very strong winds in the mustard color. Winter storm warnings up for areas of Wyoming and Montana. Winter weather advisories in the more purple color. And then we got some freeze warnings ongoing this morning for some pretty cold temperatures for early 
April standards. Flood watches are up ahead of what I just spoke on. A lot of rain on the way uh, for you folks here in this region. You know, this really won't fall today. This is starting to get into tomorrow afternoon more so and then trailing off into the next couple of days. The southeast, um, you know, it's going to be a pretty much a beautiful Sunday. Not a whole lot to speak on. Even when we where you do have an opportunity for thunderstorms in the western deep south today, I mean, they kind of sweep through and then they're done. You know, it's you're not going to get a washout today by any means. But you get into this afternoon, the immediate southeast, very quiet, still getting that return flow. So a drier, cooler air, but you're starting to warm up a little bit more. Some areas that only got into the 60s yesterday might get into the low 70s today. So you're on a gradual warming trend across the southeast. But as you can tell, some thunderstorms do develop right along the Mississippi River just about. And we could have, you know, some storms capable of producing a tornado here in like western Kentucky, western Tennessee. Um, I just don't think it'll be a high-end big deal or anything like that. And then they'll continue to sweep through the overnight hours all the way into tomorrow morning where you might wake up to some showers and storms in northern Alabama. Uh, maybe all the way into northwestern Georgia, maybe some shower activity up the Appalachian Mountain Range. So <clears throat> a little bit closer look at these storms today in the southern Mississippi Valley, the Delta region. You know, we start to, we really have to get all the way into, I mean, really like 6, 7 p.m. this evening. And there's those storms kind of just getting going right along the Arkansas, Mississippi, Tennessee state line right here. These storms fire up. If you live in this area, definitely be prepared for some storminess later on this afternoon, this evening for your Sunday evening. And these will sort of trail off to the east. Uh, kind of remain storms and strong, maybe severe at times as they sweep across the state of Tennessee. And like I said, once you get into tomorrow morning, could be waking up to some scattered downpours along northern Mississippi, northern Alabama, up into the Cumberland Plateau. So maybe you're starting to see some showers, uh, really starting to bubble up down here in southern Louisiana. This is kind of the beginning stages of a very... Very rainy and moist and stormy time uh, for that area that we'll speak on here in a few minutes. Northeast today, beautiful weather. We'll probably still be socked in clouds for a little bit here, you know, especially the further you live along the New England coastline. But hopefully you do clear up sometime this afternoon, this evening, and by the time you get really into this evening, it's nice. It's, you finally start to dry out, and then you're getting into tomorrow morning, the day of the eclipse that, you know, sweeps across this region right in here. And uh, I do think for the most part, for some of these areas, especially up into here, you know, the clouds will cooperate with this, but not a big weather day today. We're going to be waking up tomorrow morning to some showers in, in eastern Ohio, West Virginia, more than likely, and um, all the way down to western Virginia. So, South Central U.S., uh, you know, enjoy the nice weather today. You know, that's what I would say, especially if you live in central and eastern Texas, southern Oklahoma, Arkansas, Louisiana. You know, even though you'll have a threat of storms for some of those states, you know, not very widespread. Tomorrow turns into a totally different deal. Um, but you get into the sea uh, tomorrow, I'm sorry, this evening, and to the overnight hours, all the way into Monday morning, you start to see some moist, um, some some moist air in, in the form of some showers, maybe even some storms starting to bubble up along, along the Texas coastline, Louisiana coastline. So we'll watch for that. And I think this will kind of march northward as an upper low really yanks all this moisture out from the south. But today, a nice weather. Not really a whole lot to speak on. North Central U.S., a little bit different of a story here. This weakening uh, storm system will continue to weaken. and But as it does with daytime heating, we could get some storms that fire up right along, I would say, southern Minnesota. Maybe the northwestern half of Iowa. Sort of a more muted version of what happened yesterday, but a little bit further north and east. Um, but you're really lacking thermodynamics. But you could certainly get some hail with these storms. So if you live in like the Sioux Falls region, you know, if you live in north, um, <clears throat> like I said, northwestern Iowa, uh, southeastern uh, South Dakota, all the way into southern Minnesota, certainly some storms possible to likely. Just um, you're not going to get any kind of tornadoes or anything with this, most likely. You never know, though. Uh, but this continues. This will bring some showers over the Great Lakes region, upper Midwest. And um, by the time you get into tomorrow morning, we're dealing with a little bit of rain in northern Wisconsin. Uh, still some snow kind of drifting around out here in the northern plains. But a little bit closer look at these storms a little bit further south that does have this <clears throat> marginal risk down here. You start to get to about midday today. There's those storms already forming and going right through St. Louis. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm sorry, guys. <clears throat> I know that's probably pretty loud on your screen, so I got to clear my throat a little bit. Peoria dealing with some storms, Springfield some storms all the way down here 
to southeastern Mizzou, the Boot Hill, Mizzou. And uh, I do think they'll be the most intense in the southern half of uh, Illinois. This is around 4 p.m. Storms sweeping through the Boot Hill region. And then they could reform right in here. And I do think if we're going to get a sneaky tornado today, it's going to be right into here. Right where, you know, Mizzou, Kentucky, Tennessee, and Arkansas all, all meet right in here. So definitely watch out for some, I would say the most intense weather today will be right here in this region. But like I said, I, I really don't think this will be a huge deal at all. And then this eventually clears out into the overnight hours, and then we're done with it. So uh, the entire rest of the western U.S., uh, we will continue to deal with this spin, you know, snow falling in, in, in eastern Wyoming, northern Wyoming. And uh, areas in Montana, as you can tell, this is getting into about 4 or 5 p.m. We got scattered snow showers in the higher elevations of the Rockies. And just the northern Rockies, Cascades region, more consolidated moisture right in here in the northern Rockies. We'll continue to spin around. We get into the overnight hours, and uh, this will start to lessen up somewhat. But you're still dealing with the snow, especially in northeastern Wyoming. Um, as we're waking up for our Monday morning to start our work, we're still dealing with storm, uh, snow as you continue to deal with a, a, a weekend-long winter storm in this area. Um, so, you guys, if anybody lives in this area, let me know how much snow you've seen. I would definitely love to know that you're viewing from that area, one, and then two, how much snow you've seen. So, But additional snow between now and the next 48 hours, I mean, still another several inches to feed of snow, depending on where you live, especially like in the Bighorn Mountains uh, lesser snow here in southern Wyoming, but there's still a little bit of snow that's possible. But you live here in southeastern southern Montana and then northeastern Wyoming. Several more inches of snow is possible. So temperatures today uh, starting to warm on up. You know, temperatures will rise ahead of this cold front, even behind it. I mean, temperatures really aren't that cold at all. It's a very weak cold front sweeping through this region. Temperatures, temperatures into the 70s and 80s in Texas. 60s and 70s across the deep south a little you know the further kind of northeast you're working to the mid-atlantic you're still dealing with that pesky return flow from that spinning uh broad area of low pressure up here in atlantic canada uh, so you continue to get this diving of cooler air ohio valley you know 50s and 60s uh, you are going to get that pocket of cooler air up here where you're socked in clouds and rain so 30s and 40s where you're dealing with that up here in the upper midwest great plains and then the western U.S., uh, certainly uh, chillier, I would say, than average out here as you have lower pressure overhead. So uh, definitely more of a chillier Sunday, that's for sure. All right, guys, so let's go on and break down this this streak of severe weather we have upcoming. You know, I, I, last night's video, I've noticed a trend. The evening videos just do not get as many views. Um, but uh, I think it's very important uh, to really dive into uh, really what drives these systems and I got very detailed in last night's video going to get detailed again in uh, this morning's video uh, but um, definitely if you really want to know this like the, the super details on this definitely check out last night's video but like I said we're going to dive into the ingredients here talk about what the radar could look like so tomorrow the day of the eclipse Monday we have a huge broad slight risk so this extends all the way to Norman Oklahoma all the way down to San Antonio all the way over to Shreveport Houston, Austin, Albaline's included in this. So, you know, big slight risk. What is this driven off of? Tornado threat? There is a 5% risk of a tornado within 25 miles in a given location, right in the path of totality, guys. Um, I do think most of this will really get going after the path of totality kind of ma makes its way through later in the afternoon tomorrow. But, you know, we all, I wouldn't say joked around, but there was chatter. It being April, total eclipse in April in the middle of severe weather season for the south. You know, will we end up getting severe weather on the data of the eclipse? And sure enough, <laughs> there is a slight risk right um, over the path of totality. So um, here we are. Uh, Shreveport, 5% over to Dallas, almost down to Houston, San Antonio. 5% risk of a tornado right here in east of Texas, east central Texas, central Texas. 2% in the green. Wind threat, uh, not a huge wind risk tomorrow, but this could increase. 5% risk of winds exceeding 55 to 60 miles per hour. Health threat could be the biggest threat tomorrow, could be, uh, but this is really what's driving the slight risk as of now, I would say. Well, no, the 5% risk of a tornado is too, but, you know, we have a risk of significant severe weather, which means that, you know, in the black outline area, uh, you have a 10% risk of a two inch in diameter or larger hail if you live in this black outline area with the black dashes going in between it. And then the yellow area in general, it's in general a 15% risk 
of hail exceeding one inch in diameter. Not added on to that two that ten percent guys that make like twenty five. That's not how it works. It's on two separate things. So big hail threat potential for tomorrow and for Tuesday. We'll speak on that here in a second. Let's focus in on Monday. So we are in range of the H triple R model. Another one will drop here in about an hour. That's gonna uh, put us even deeper in the range, but starting off tomorrow morning, already dealing with some showers along the Texas coastline, Louisiana coastline. As we start to get to three, uh, two to three p.m. Right, path of totality going what right through here, I believe. Um, you're dealing with showers, and if you're not dealing with showers, you're going to be dealing with cloud cover most likely. Anytime you have a very moist air mass in place, you run the risk of clouds. Um, but you get into deeper into the afternoon, get into the evening. These are when these storms could be quite intense. And to me, uh, you got enough mid-level flow. We'll talk about that here in a second. But these storms could be, could produce a tornado. There's enough kinematics in the atmosphere, plenty of thermodynamics, meaning higher dew points, surface temperatures, and cape levels are rising. So these storms will form, uh, won't really move very fast. They will really just be clustered up. So this will be a day where, you know, when you get one storm, you're not done. You'll probably get multiple opportunities for uh, storms. You could get multiple strong to severe storms, uh, but very stormy conditions. And this is around 8 p.m. tomorrow at, tomorrow night. Very stormy conditions from Dallas all the way to the northeast corner of, of uh, Texas, uh, southwest sections of Arkansas, and then northeast areas of, I'm sorry, northwest areas of Louisiana, just northern Louisiana in general. Nasty storms getting going, and we can't ignore these storms way up here. In North Texas, either uh, these could produce more. I would say more of a higher chance for hell, in my opinion. Uh, but you notice one thing, where you have the solid risk of hell right here in this region. There ain't really any storms getting going. You're like, well, what's the point of having the risk over here? Well, you know, there's probably going to be the potential for some sort of capping mechanism in place. Meaning, um, this particular run of the H triple R model might be downplaying the initiation of convection back in this region i do think there'll be some storms that form in this region but there's also an opportunity that they do they don't but i do think the highest confidence for on all hazards a kind of a, a smaller all hazards event is certainly in eastern texas right in here and a lot of rain could fall with these a very moist air mass and then you know we getting into like just after midnight we got some nasty storms all the way up here in the southern oklahoma uh tomorrow night into tuesday morning a lot of heavy rain up here so I definitely think this is going to favor multi-clusters of storms, mesoscale convective systems. We call them MCSs for short, uh, but certainly, um, definitely, uh, definitely going to have some storms that are going to be rotating with this. You know, we start to get into the afternoon and evening. This is this one particular run between now and about 1 a.m. Tuesday morning uh, showing rotation with some of these storms. And there's certainly, uh, you know, a signal for rotating updrafts based off the updraft velocity swath here. Um, definitely have some storms rotating, even up here. So we're probably going to get some tornado warnings tomorrow. I, I would say this isn't a super high-end threat of tornadoes, but it could uptrend to a 10% risk. So we'll watch this. Now let's move to Tuesday. You notice for Tuesday, the risk area doesn't change much. It actually broadens more. I mean, it, it doesn't really change on the western end of this in Texas. Uh, it goes up to the southern counties of Oklahoma, including the Red River and includes areas a little bit further um, east, you know, includes a good chunk of like two thirds of Louisiana. And now includes, a, the slight risk now includes an area of southeastern uh, Mississippi, and then a little bit more of southern Arkansas. So, you know, one thing about Tuesday, and I was speaking with somebody on social media about what's gonna be the highest risk of tornadoes as far as which day, Monday through Thursday, which one of those four days? And his his thinking was was Tuesday. And he's a very smart young guy. He's younger than me. And, you know, that's that's where I love to gain knowledge. You know, I never get offended by anything when somebody challenges my thoughts. Because I, in my opinion, I think Wednesday and Thursday is the bigger threat, especially Wednesday. Thursday can get kind of weird. But, you know, there is a shot. And I do think Tuesday, and just looking at things kind of re-over, right, I think Tuesday could end up being a little bit more of a higher end tornado threat than maybe my original thinking. He made some really good points. 15% risk of severe weather within 25 miles in any given location. And uh, you see this huge hatched region right here. In this case, on day three, it just means there's a 10% risk of severe weather, of significant severe weather. In this case, what is it going to be? Well, not sure. What I think is going to happen is you're probably going to get 
a hatched risk for significant hell. And I do think sometime between now and the next 48 hours, you're probably going to get a 10% risk of a tornado um, in this area right in here. Um, so we'll see what it looks like as we wake up tomorrow morning when we'll have it broken down and, you know, your, your category outlooks as far as tornadoes, hell and wind. But as of now, uh, I could see this uptrending to an enhanced risk. I, I could. And in fact, they talk about this down here. They say, where is it? Let's see if I can find it on the fly. Uh, greater severe weather prob probabilities may be needed in later outlooks. So, uh, it already mentions, you know, the prob the, the chances of maybe another, you know, uh, category kind of bump up as far as uh, the risk level. So the next one would be in the orange, which would be an enhanced risk. So what's really driving uh, Tuesday? Well, it's not a whole lot different than Monday. I think that your kinematics become a little bit more favorable, your wind flow aloft. But you're waking up Tuesday morning, a ton of rich moisture across Texas in this area. These are dew points. Dew points in the 60s and 70s are certainly supportive for a severe weather. It's a supportive thermodynamic. So you start to move into the Tuesday afternoon, the most favorable time of the day, prime heating, right? Plenty of low-level moisture well, you know, west of the Dallas-Fort Worth area and uh, plenty of um, uh, deep moisture down to the Texas coastline and dew points in the upper 60s across Louisiana, Mississippi, and uh, the southern half of Arkansas, you know, that low-level moisture, you can check that off the box as, a, as, as an ingredient for sure. You know, and, you know, speaking on also for, and let's make sure we got this right here, speaking on uh, Wednesday, which we'll kind of move to in a, in a second, we're just going to focus in on Tuesday with this. I kind of did it a little bit different in last night's video. So if you're wondering what about Wednesday, uh, hang with me. I'm going to, I'm going to have a specific segment for Tuesday's threat because we're a little bit closer to it now compared to obviously last night's video, but plenty of moisture in the atmosphere, right? It doesn't move much. As we start to get into Wednesday, the, uh, the air mass begins to move eastward. Drier air began, becomes, uh, and replaces this really moist air. So with the higher dew points in place, what about your Cape levels? So we look at mixed layer Cape in this case, this is based off the Euro Tuesday afternoon, plenty plenty of storm fuel in the atmosphere. We got Cape values, you know, from two to 3,000 joules per kilogram down here. And this is an area to certainly watch for tornadoes. Plenty of fuel in the atmosphere right in here. And there's probably going to be, you know, an appreciable severe weather threat right in here. You know, even though it shows the higher Cape levels, like down a little bit further south in Texas, that remember, that does not necessarily mean that's where you're going to have your highest end tornado threat. Where is your best overlapping of ingredients as far as kinematics, and thermodynamics. That's where your highest tornado threat and your highest severe weather threat is going to be. So you keep this going. Obviously, the air mass gets worked as we're going to have tons of convection, showers, and storms. So, you know, the storm energy kind of depletes itself, if you will, and then we get into Wednesday morning. So speaking of the kinematics, the wind flow aloft, we start to move. Let's see if we got this. Yeah, I'm going to have to click that. Look at Tuesday. Um... Are you going to move for me? Come on now. I'm sorry. Pivotal weather can be kind of weird. Uh, but we start to get into Tuesday afternoon. Notice the flow is starting to increase compared to Monday. And I know I didn't show it in this video. I showed it in last night's video. But the flow is really increasing as this trough back here is really starting to amplify. So in the mid-levels of the atmosphere, you're starting to get you know, wind speeds going at about interstate speed. You know, 60, 65 knots. Um, and it's rising all the way into southern Arkansas. So you're probably going to get right into here a higher end tornado threat. I would say if you're going to get a 10% risk of a tornado, maybe a significant tornado, EF2 or higher, it's going to be right into here. Maybe it oozing into Louisiana a little bit for Tuesday afternoon. Okay. And then this starts to get into uh, Wednesday afternoon. I'm sorry, Wednesday morning. And then the flow really starts to get a move on to the east. Okay. So as far as, you know, what this could look like on radar, we're not really in range of uh, these short range model guidance. All, all we know is it's going to be a convective mess, a very messy storm mode, meaning you're not going to, the, the chances for like very discrete supercells, is going to be pretty low. You're probably going to have embedded spin ups in these clusters of storms, semi discrete supercells. And it's just going to be very a messy convective look, which makes this dangerous. It does. You know, I think there's going to be plenty of moist air in the atmosphere. I think this will really saturate the column, uh, creating um, ample amounts 
of lift in the atmosphere, plenty of moisture to work with, and we are certainly going to have, you know, these areas that you see like in the splotches of orange, uh, this is where, you know, we could have that more enhanced, literally, quite literally, an enhanced risk of severe th weather here in eastern Texas for sure. So I do want to mention also, um, this is between now and just Tuesday evening, all these showers and storms are really going to create a flooding risk. You know, three, four, maybe five inches of rain in northeast Texas, southeast Oklahoma, Arkansas, northern Louisiana. All right. And then we look into the deep south. This is just between now and Tuesday evening. Okay. Um, scattered one to three inch rainfall totals right into the Mississippi Valley. So a lot of rain, a lot of rain over the next few days in this area for sure. So the next thing you look at is day four and day five. Okay. Not, there hasn't really been many shifts with this. So one, one shift that we, we know, if you compare the one from the last, is uh, this is further east. But, you know, in general, from the last outlook, this is about the same. So uh, the severe weather threat does shift east as we get into Wednesday. Still, you know, could have a severe weather threat as you're in eastern Texas. Includes all of Louisiana, southern half of Arkansas. I mean, I would say like 90% of Mississippi. And the entire like southern southwest flank of Alabama. And now the panhandle of Florida. So you got that risk. That means in the yellow, 15% risk of severe weather within 25 miles in a given location. Okay. And then we move to day five. This is for Thursday. 15% risk of severe weather within 25 miles in a given location from southeast North Carolina, right through the Midlands and the eastern sections of South Carolina, right into all of central and southern Georgia, and then into the panhandle and northern sections of Florida. Okay. So I do think there will be a severe weather threat. And I'm, I'm telling you, I do think this... This yellow area will extend a little bit further northeast and include probably more of North Carolina, probably in the later outlook. So what's driving this? We'll go over the ingredients for both days. We know we start Wednesday morning, a lot of moisture already in place, still dealing with a little bit of dry air, but you're starting to moisten up the atmosphere already for the Carolinas, but you're starting to move forward here. Let's get this in motion. And uh, we start to work into the afternoon hours and uh, there's a plenty of moist air in place. There, there's some there's some challenges with this forecast and figuring out where the higher tornado threat is going to be, which is the most dangerous, uh, you know, part of severe weather for the most part. Um, what is what kind of convection showers and storms are you going to have in the mornings of the severe weather threat? And I think we're going to have a lot. So you know, the morning showers and storms can work up the atmosphere to the point where it really can't recover by the time you get to the prime heating of the day, like the afternoon evening hours. So that is kind of a fail mode, which is a good thing, that could dampen uh, the severe weather threat for Wednesday. But as of now, we'll just focus on what we got. So a lot of uh, low-level moisture in place all the way up the Mississippi uh, Valley, you know, all the way into uh, Texas. I'm sorry, Tennessee. You know, I like to mix my states up. I like to try to keep you guys on, uh, uh, just make sure you are paying attention. So, <laughs> But she's getting to Wednesday evening. Uh, the moist sector, if you will, begins to shift um, and take over the southeast. More moist air building across the Carolinas, the southeast. And, of course, as we get into about midday, early afternoon Thursday, dew points rising into the 70s and 60s all the way up uh, into Virginia. And I know my folks in North Carolina, Virginia, who are tuning in, like, why aren't you including us? Let's get a little bit closer to this. And, of course, we'll get more detailed on that. But plenty of moisture in the atmosphere, right? Um, so this hangs around, and then the dry air kind of, uh, moves in, recovers the atmosphere, and stabilizes it. So, you know, what about the Cape levels? Well, it, as we get into Wednesday, this entire severe weather multi-day event turns into a, what we call a high shear, low Cape event, mem mem uh, meaning we got better thermodynamics and, I'm sorry, we got better kinematics and we got not as good thermodynamics. And you'll see what I mean here. We start to get into Wednesday afternoon you know, the severe weather threat is centered right over Louisiana, and rightfully so. You know, you got Cape levels 1,000 to 1,500 joules per kilogram, and but you got an increasing kinematic field, a better low-level and mid-level flow that's going to support damaging winds and a tornado threat in this area. But how worked is this atmosphere? We're just not quite sure. And we start to get into the overnight hours. We're probably going to have a lot of convection on going across the deep south. And then we start to get into the southeast. And look at these Cape levels rising um, 
It's spiking close to 1,000 joules per kilogram in eastern uh, North Carolina, eastern South Carolina, central South Carolina, Piedmont of North Carolina, etc. Uh, but the kinematic energy is even more so enhanced compared to, to Wednesday. So uh, a lot of wind flow aloft. Uh, I probably, uh, you're, right now, they're, as far as Thursday, they're really discussing a big damaging wind threat. But we got to watch because this trough is going to take on negative tilt, which typically um, promotes more of a MCS threat, uh, basically a mesoscale convective system, basically a huge line of storms as the capability of producing damaging winds. And you can see this, you know, as we start to get into, you know, Wednesday afternoon, you know, mid-level flow starts to push 70 to 80 knots, right? Pockets of more here in Alabama. All right. And this continues to enhance into the overnight hours. And then we start to get into Thursday morning and we start to get into Thursday midday. You got you got this mid-level jet pushing 70 to 80 knots. And then it increases even more as we get into Georgia and South Carolina, as we get into, uh, you know, Thursday afternoon, Thursday evening. And then, you know, another thing that we look at here is that low-level jet, which I typically stay away from this far out because this is really more so driven off that surface low. But um, we'll take a look at it here. And as we are starting to get into Tuesday, Wednesday, and then Wednesday afternoon, there's that embedded low level jet. One thing I want you to notice though, is the favorable low level, basically the shear is displaced from the favorable thermodynamics. You notice that, right? There's a displacement from the higher cape levels, which is right here, right? Let's kind of go back and look at this. Let's see. Hopefully it'll work for me without clicking it. Like this is Wednesday afternoon. Notice most of the energy is right here. But if you look right here, the favorable low-level jet is displaced to the east. So you don't have overlapping ingredients. It's good right in here. So now looking at this, is the tornado threat going to be there? Does, you know, what happens? Do, do these become in better agreement? Agreement? It's it's a tough one, you know, and then you start to get into Thursday. Low-level jet starts to really ramp up, and, you know, we get to about midday Thursday. Look at this low-level jet really cranking, and you know what? We might as well even just look at, I'm going to do this on the fly, look at a little bit further north, and I think this is a better move to do here. Just bear with me, guys. And, you know, we start to get into Thursday. And here's that low-level jet really ramping through this region. We start to get into Thursday afternoon, Thursday evening. And you got this favorable low-level jet over this region. And uh, I, like I said, you know, I really think there's a potential that the severe weather threat could extend a lot more into North Carolina, maybe even Southeast Virginia. Um, but, you know, what is, in this case, for example, what are we going to – are we having overlapping of ingredients here, you know? And you go back and look at the Cape, and we switch uh, vantage points here and look at the Mid-Atlantic, and let's see what it looks like. And are we having the overlapping of the thermodynamics and the kinematics here? Uh, let's see. Yes, a lot better for um, for Thursday evening. So, you know, you got Cape uh, values anywhere from 500 to 1,000 joules per kilogram X layer Cape right here over the Carolinas. You mix that with this low level jet and uh yeah could have a more of a substantial severe weather threat for thursday just because you have better overlapping ingredients but guys this is just one model run and one thing it does mention in the storm prediction center is there's still some disagreements from some of the ensemble guidance about the behavior i guess you would say of the surface low so of multi-surface lows so let's give you one last eclipse cloud forecast um, this is what you call, let me make sure I don't word this wrong. This is what you call the super range ensemble. Basically combines uh, short range model guidance and creates one model run out of it. So this is the latest information. Uh, you notice that it's a little bit more kind of, I would say, toned in, uh, zoomed in as far as these numbers, as far as cloud cover. But this is a broad look. There's the path to totality right here. Let's go on and take a look at some of these individual areas. Uh, this is what they're calling for now. You notice confidence has increased for a lot of cloud cover down here in North Mexico and then uh, Southern and Southwest Texas. So, you know, if you're viewing down here, it's 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 going to be a buzzkill. I'm just going to be honest with you. There's going to be a lot of clouds. It's not going to be enjoyable. 
I know if you made plans, you know, there ain't a whole lot you can do sometimes, you know, but see if you can maybe adjust, but I know that's not easy. I know it ain't. But, you know, you start to move into North Texas. This is an area that's improved. So once you get to the Dallas-Fort Worth area, Paris, Northeast Texas, uh, Texarkana, Tyler, you know, it's down to maybe like 25 to maybe 40% of the skies covered in clouds. Uh, so it's improved a little bit for this area. That's good, right? So we get into Arkansas. It's actually improved for this area also. You know, now we got some decent clearing showing up on some of the model guidance. So if you're in Arkansas, this is good news for sure. Now, you know, anywhere from 15 to 30% of the sky covered in clouds, it looks like. Maybe a little bit more up here in the Ozarks. Okay. Then we start to look in a Missouri, very small section of Missouri. And, uh, you know, southeast Missouri is right on the fringe. You might be dealing with some some clouds a little bit closer to Springfield, but they're not in like the path of totality. But, you know, the Boot Hill, Missouri... Same kind of deal. Maybe like 15. There's a chance for like 15 to 30 percent of the uh, sky covered in clouds in this in this area. Look at Illinois and Illinois and Indiana, and uh, it's remained pretty steady in this area. Um, it's <clears throat> I would say in general maybe the chance for clouds has increased a little bit, but anywhere from you got you know cloud cover as small as maybe like 23 percent, 20 percent to maybe as high as like. 45 percent in evansville so we'll see what happens but it looks like more of the sky will be clear than not in this path of totality right here and of course this does include in fact let's just look at ohio ohio really you know things have improved somewhat you know this is an area that you know cleveland at one point was over 50 percent calling for over 50 percent of the sky covered in clouds but you know it's improved somewhat for like northeastern i'm sorry northwestern ohio uh, but still, you know, a good maybe a good chunk of the sky covered in clouds. We gotta watch this. But once you get into like northeast Pennsylvania, northwest Pennsylvania, it looks like a, a you know, in in, in like north um, east Ohio, certainly a lot more of the sky is gonna be covered in clouds more than likely. New York, it's not gonna be that great for Buffalo, I don't think. Up to Watertown, Syracuse, this is an area that's, you know, probably over fifty to sixty to seventy percent of the sky is gonna be covered in clouds during the total eclipse. It's improved a little bit for northern uh, Vermont. So let's round this off by looking at New England. And this is by far going to be the best area to view the total eclipse, you know, by far. You know, once you get into northern Vermont, northern New Hampshire, and then the middle part of Maine, you know, you, you might, it might be like no, hardly any clouds in the sky whatsoever. So uh, that's all I got, guys. Y'all have a wonderful day. I don't think I'll have a video this evening. We'll see what happens. Uh, but God bless all y'all. Y'all have a wonderful Sunday, and I'll talk to you soon.